Doctors, psychologists, and scientists from all over the world believe that food and adrenaline addictions are diseases like alcoholism and drug addiction. All signs of the addiction are obvious. The desire to escape from problems, getting used to the same pleasure, and a gradual increase in the dose of this pleasure. And the most important thing is that all addictions have the same mechanism of action. That is, the processes that are launched in the brain after consumption of alcohol are identical to those happening after a tasty meal. The same is experienced by an extreme athlete after a dangerous parachute jump or conquering a new height. Pleasure is triggered by a complex chain of biochemical reactions involving neuropeptides and opioids. Dopamine, serotonin, adrenaline, noradrenaline, gamma aminobutyric acid, and opioid peptides. They are described in detail and well studied, but people lose fight against pleasure because the pleasure is what probably we aspire in life and what we do not want to refuse under no circumstances. The 21st century has become the century of stress and, as a result, addictions, because we live in the times of unprecedented cult of success. We must constantly be in a good mood, earn well and spend a lot. We try to compensate for the feeling of dissatisfaction and the anxiety caused by our lack of success with pleasure to get us back to the norm as soon as possible. This is how we acquire addictions. Food is the most accessible, easy and permitted pleasure, a habitual way to relieve stress. There is nothing surprising in the fact that people become addicted to food. In addition to physical pleasure, food also gives psychological satisfaction. Food is the context in which a person cannot feel unsuccessful. They manage to eat. Look, they may not be able to achieve certain results at work, in personal life or in sports, but they can be successful in food. This is where the food addiction comes from. A person enjoys what they eat. They consume different products and experience the state of joy at that moment. This is why it is very easy to get hooked on food, especially if there are problems in life and everything has fallen apart. The nature itself pushes us towards this dependence. Eating more and storing fat is the strategy that helped our ancestors to survive for centuries. People at all times, starting perhaps from the purgatorious 65 million years ago, always lived in the conditions of a lack of food. This is why we are tooled for eating everything we see. The problem emerged when the excess food appeared, when the producing household was created, or when the fridge was invented. However much we read or hear about the benefits of vegetables and low-fat products, our body keeps choosing the most harmful things. Why? Fat and sweet products contain more calories, extra calories used to give our ancestors elevated chances of survival. As a result, the body is genetically programmed to select more caloric food. How can we fight a food addiction? Specialists single out two tactics for combating any addiction, not just the food one. The first way is the abrupt termination of this addiction, when we take a person and transfer them to another context. Abrupt termination of an addiction sounds absurd in case of food. A person can't just stop eating completely. However, this recommendation shall not be interpreted literally. You need to abandon just the food that is not aimed at satisfying hunger. That is, don't eat because of stress or boredom, or just for the sake of pleasure. The second tactic of combating an addiction is just as universal. It doesn't matter if we're talking about cigarettes or food. The second option is gradual reduction of this addiction. This is when the dose of a drug or alcohol is gradually reduced during treatment of the addiction. This is why we have this principle of sharpness or gradualness. These are the basic ways of treating dependent states. If we talk about gradual reduction of the dose in case of a foot addiction, it should be noted once again that diets are ineffective. 70 to 90 percent of people not just return the lost weight, but also gain a few extra pounds within two to three months after a diet. 
Nutritionists recommend replacing temporary restrictions on food with complete revisions of one's eating habits. Exclude refined products, wheat flour pastries, crisps, and sugar. Replace sweets with fruits and honey. Eat less fried food and give preference to boiled vegetables and meat. Gradually replace high-calorie products with more useful ones. Reduce the sizes of meals and exclude snacks on the go. But this is not the main thing. Psychologists recommend finding out in the first place which stress the addicted person tries to chase away. As a rule, in case with food addiction, it is necessary to understand what the person's problem is. If we talk about food addiction, I said that a person cannot be unsuccessful in food, so to say. There are some formats, some goals that cannot be achieved by this person. The easiest way to get rid of the food addiction is to determine the goals set by the person and the reason why it cannot be achieved, to work around it, and then, I believe, the food addiction will stop. Why do some people get addicted while others don't? It is believed that our genes are responsible for it. Our genes control our receptivity to pleasure and the extent to which this pleasure will be attractive. On the one hand, the genes program the sensitivity of receptors to the opioids, to dopamine, serotonin, adrenaline, and noradrenaline. On the other hand, there are enzymes that destroy these substances faster or slower. For example, my grandfather and I have high activity of enzyme that breaks up alcohol. Therefore, I can drink, and without getting any pleasure from alcohol, just drink it, then I'll feel sleepy and leave. I don't have the state of pleasure, therefore, I'm not interested in drinking alcohol. And I don't understand why I would do it. Each of us has their own pain point, their risk zone. Some people experience a powerful burst of euphoria from a meal or a glass of wine in the evening. For someone, it takes a risk and the release of adrenaline. Interest doesn't always become an addiction, but the DNA of a certain percentage of people lacks the hormones of happiness, serotonin and dopamine. In other words, they don't normally experience the normal level of joy from life. Therefore, they compensate for the lack of this joy by means of pleasures from drugs, food, or adrenaline. Michael Schumacher is a legend of Formula One. He left professional sport but could not abandon risk and extreme. In 2013, he went to an unprepared ski slope, hit a rock at high speed and got a brain injury, the consequences of which turned out to be extremely harsh. Does Schumacher depend on adrenaline? This question can only be answered by a specialist after a personal consultation, but there is still quite a high possibility that he was pushed towards constant risk by the addiction. Like food addiction, adrenaline addiction is natural to some extent. We cannot abandon food or live without adrenaline. This hormone regulates the arterial pressure and the content of glucose in our blood. It actively participates in the metabolism of the body. In a stressful situation, it makes us ready to fight or run away. Our reaction accelerates and the concentration of attention increases. But in the modern world, which is relatively safe, most people lack acute short-term stress, danger, and lack adrenaline in the blood as a result. Humans are designed to live surrounded by predators, eternal hunger and cold, diseases and the lack of everything in the world. A person has a system of counteracting something bad, but there is nowhere to apply this system. The person experiences the excess of powers because they need to resist adversities, but there are no adversities. We can say that adrenaline addiction is the problem of the 21st century exclusively. Undoubtedly, there have always been people predisposed to it, but the conditions of life used to ensure a sufficient adrenaline rush. Society is a relatively stable environment, according to Darwin. The wise theory of natural variability and selection, albeit criticized, is really reasonable. 
The character of preferences may change. For example, the 19th century, it was a sword duel. Nowadays, it's going to be a race in expensive cars. Today, some people are satisfied with the adrenaline rush caused by urban stress, traffic jams, and stressful jobs. For others, it is not enough. In order to satisfy their adrenaline hunger, they need parachute jumps, conquering the roofs of skyscrapers or industrial facilities with no belay. The synthesis of adrenaline is closely connected to the synthesis of pleasure hormones. It becomes a natural drug. The attractiveness of adrenaline intoxication also lies in the fact that it gives a person a psychological advantage over others. When a person is in the adrenaline state, they feel their power over other people. The nature of adrenaline addiction is essentially similar to the alcohol one. Those who are prone to it similarly suffer from insufficient activation of the pleasure center. There is the same problem. The tolerance to adrenaline is formed rather quickly. In an effort to experience pleasure once again, the person increases the dose and the degree of extreme with a risk to life. A person who, for example, races on the Moscow Ring Road at a speed of 125 miles per hour, an adrenaline junkie, as we call such people, forgets about everything else. This person forgets about difficulties and their inner dialogue. They are only focused on here and now. And the adrenaline addiction is characterized by this very fact, that it helps a person forget about all other problems and insignificant things and dives into the experience that they like. This is a psychological moment. What can an adrenaline junkie and their dear ones do? The characteristic feature of an addiction is that the person in question rarely acknowledges it. The understanding usually comes when the health has already been undermined and the danger for life is obvious. First, we have to ensure that this person blows off steam properly and safely. It can be done through various means, from watching an action movie or an interesting captivating flick, to going to the gym or swimming pool, some exciting trips or traveling. The main thing is to ensure that this adrenaline is constantly released and doesn't reach the level where the person is no longer in control of the situation. Scientists have discovered that during a virtual danger, a person experiences almost the same adrenaline rush as during a real one. This is why the gaming addiction has become one of the kinds of adrenaline addictions. People leave the real world for computer fantasies, often abandon their work and break up with their dear ones for the sake of the same adrenaline rush. So when does the natural strife for pleasure end? And where does the addiction begin? After all, everyone loves tasty food, but not everyone is addicted. When does a passion for extreme sports become really dangerous? And when do computer games take people away from reality? Let's say a person plays some game, for example, 15 minutes per day. How bad is it for him? Well, perhaps it's not even bad. It helps him relieve stress. If a person plays for four hours a day, the situation is quite different. But if a person spends 12 hours a day playing, it means that the person doesn't have any free time for anything else. There were cases when people died from this game addiction right in Internet cafes. That is, a person forgets that they need to eat, to drink, drink and to sleep, and the body just can't take it. Unfortunately, there were such cases. The essence of addictions, whatever they are, is that they are inevitably dangerous for life or harmful to health. This applies to alcohol, to overeating, and to the passion for extreme. Likewise, the addiction gradually becomes the only passion and the only joy. When you can't tear yourself away from it, it becomes vitally important for you. And you spend most of your time on your addiction. When we say that a part of the family budget, or even most of it, is spent on hobbies and passions, 
that is, money, time, and some other resources are spent not on socialization, but on this very phenomenon that absorbs a person. Let's conduct an experiment. There are two young men. They both play their favorite shooters every day. They think that they're going to meet a psychologist. Both men were asked to wait and offered a computer game to fill in time. Actually, the experiment has already begun. At the same time, a photo session of an attractive model takes place within the field of view of the subjects. The cameras will record how often the young men will take their eyes off of the screens and pay attention to the girl. The goal is to find out how a person for whom gaming is a hobby reacts to the world around and how it is for the one who has a gaming addiction. The girl tries to attract attention. She attempts to start a conversation and asks to bring her water. We sum it up a half hour later. The first gamer was periodically distracted by the girl. He took his eyes off of the screen seven times and was quicker than the second player to respond to the request. The second player only looked at the girl twice. The second time was when she asked to bring her water in a loud and clear voice. It indicates that his social activity is suppressed. His interest in the opposite sex is reduced in general. He prefers solitude to communication. The existing addiction becomes the core of the person's interests. Even regardless of the fact that the young man can actually pay attention to the girl and even help her, he will return to his addiction and the circle will close. Yes, we talked for five to ten minutes and even an hour, and then the person returns to the computer instantly. That is, the computer becomes the most important interest and the most important trait of character. It would seem that the recipe of getting rid of an addiction is simple. Be moderate in everything. Find a hobby that will provide the missing emotions and sensations. See a psychologist to get help and get rid of the stress. But since the proneness to addiction is genetically inherent in some of us, it's no use fighting it, right? And all the ways of fighting are just temporary solutions to the problem. Psychologists can't answer this question unequivocally. Most likely, it takes the whole life to overcome an addiction. Everything depends on the time and on the person. Indeed, there is a type of people determined by their nervous system for whom it's better to quit once and for all and not use, try or perceive afterwards. There are such people and their amount is quite great, about 40%. On the other hand, there are people who can, with the help of certain training or psychological help, reduce this dose of drugs, cigarettes, alcohol or computer games under supervision and not have any problems afterwards. Everything depends on the person here. For centuries, the mankind has been striving to live in safety and abundance. And today, in developed countries, there are much more pleasures and temptations than hardships. But in order to keep pleasures from killing us, we should regularly ask ourselves a question. Aren't we addicted to them? Kicking out an addiction is very difficult. But psychologists emphasize admitting one's own addiction is a huge step on the way to recovery.